Uh, g'day all, Matt Roberts here. Just wanted to do a quick video to demonstrate the use of these um, uh, von paper tracing of, of memory, use of variables uh, in processing. So I've got a very simple example here, which is a ball moving down the screen, or a circle moving down the screen, and it moves from the top and continues all the way down. Now this is very common processing code to demonstrate variables because we have a variable y which represents the y position of that circle and that y gets incremented each time so the y position of the circle is being incremented each time draw gets called so it moves down the screen <coughs> excuse me what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it so instead of starting at the top of the screen the ball actually starts halfway down the screen i'll be explicit i'll write 400 but i might otherwise write width divided by two uh, let's put 400 down here as well just to make this program a bit simpler. Um, so we got the same program, but now the ball starts halfway down. What I really wanted to demonstrate though was tracing it um, on paper so that we can understand what's happening in the memory as this program executes. So uh, the program executes top to bottom ish kind of. It actually goes, does the top to the bottom, then does the void setup once, and then does the draw over and over again. That's how processing programs always go. So what happens when this line is executed, int y equals 0? It's the declaration of a variable. And what that means in processing is um, a piece of memory, a slot of memory, is going to be set aside and named y. So this is how I draw that in a diagram. This, set of mem this little piece of memory has been set aside for us. And the name Y is referencing that, or pointing to that, or, or going towards that. Now, <clears throat> once we set aside the memory, something has to go in there. And with um, processing, the initial value for an integer will just be zero. You can really think of these things just being filled in with zeros when they're set aside. So after that first line, all this has happened in memory. Ah, oh, by the way, this is my, my standard sheet for tracing out processing programs. If I've got my own notebook, I can just draw this myself. Uh, but we've got a version of this on iLearn for you as well. Um, this here is the processing window if I ever want to draw what's going on on the screen. And this here is the bank of memory already set out for me. And this space for me to put the names of the various banks of memory over on the left. So this bot in memory has been given the name Y. Um, and zero has appeared in there just from that first line. Now the second line does nothing at all because it's empty. The third line is the start of setup. So that, that will run. Now what happens here? on line 4. Well, we're saying y should now be equal to 400. The variable y should be equal to 400. So from a memory point of view, that means the bucket that y is pointing to, the thing named y, should no longer have a 0 in it. It should now have 400 in it. So it's like that gets erased and a 400 gets put in there. So now in y is 400. Next thing that happens is the size of the screen gets set. Well, that doesn't change memory at all. Then the draw function is called. Uh, the background gets made black. So I guess my screen gets filled in, in some sense. Then y gets set to y plus 1. What happens here from a memory point of view is that we're going to be putting, this is what equality means, putting a new value into y. y equals means put a new value in y. But what value should I put in there? It's going to be this. And to find out what this is, I first have to work out what y is. So when I want to know what y is, I look it up in the memory. So I look up y in the memory, and it's 400. So 400 plus 1 equals 401. So now I know that this section here really means 401, uh, at least the first time round. And so y equals 401 means erase whatever was in Y before and put in 401 please. So now Y contains 401. The next line is to draw an ellipse on the screen at X position 400, Y position of whatever's inside the variable Y. Well what's inside the variable Y is 401. So I go to X position 400 and Y position 401 and I draw a little ellipse. Then the draw function goes again. So we loop back around to the top of the draw function. And background gets called again, which just scribbles out the whole screen. And y gets set to y plus 1. So that means look up y, 401, add 1 to it, 402, put that back inside y. 
So now inside y is the number 402. And then the call to ellipse comes. Go across to 400, down to 402, draw the circle. So you can see we're going to be drawing circle, 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 circle over and over a little bit further down the screen. Now this is a lot more to keep track of. If you can understand what's going on just from the processing program itself, then all well and good. But soon enough you'll have to start thinking more about what's happening in memory and it's good to practice on these simple examples where there's just one bucket in memory with one name and its value is changing as it goes. You're also welcome to come up with your own notations for doing this, um, whatever works for you. Often people will just have, um, they might draw, oops, sorry, they might draw Y and just say Y is 400 and then rub out that 400 and change it to a 401 and rub that out and change it to a 402. That's okay in this case when we're just doing simple variables that works really well. Um, we're using this version because when we get to uh, compound data we'll, this, this still works and compound data doesn't work quite so well with the simpler ones. So I just wanted to show you that as a demo practice this on more complicated programs. Um, keep it in your toolbox for when you're struggling to understand what's going on in a program. That's it for now.